But the major thing that I want you to understand about this grinder is it is very smooth, it is very precise, it is heavy built for the job it has to do. Uh, and that's what gives us consistency. We use a 90 volt DC gear drive motor to drive the cam so that we get a consistent feed. We're a little bit overpowered as far as the power goes, but that's what you have to have to get smoothness. We have a speed control that we can speed it up or down, and generally we run it at about 40 to 50 percent uh, of what that motor actually can do, and it gives us a good steady feed. Uh, today I'm going to be running at about 40. I'll slow it down and let you see that, and then I'll speed it up. Uh, we have uh, a, a, a knob up on the very top that raises and lowers the grind rock so we can determine how deep we want to go down or we can raise it up and hit it lighter. There is an adjustment right here on the feed finger. Both of these adjustments are shake proof so they won't vibrate and change. This adjustment will adjust how far it pushes the tooth. So if I push the tooth up and just barely hit the face and barely come out the top, that's where I want to be and I want to grind lightly. Everything we do we want to be a light grind, not a heavy grind uh, on bandsaw blades. But if I increase off of the face it'll hit harder on the right hand side or if I decrease it and hit more on the face it'll hit less on the right hand side being the right hand side being the back of the tooth. So as you, as you see me adjust these I'm going to demonstrate that. Uh, you'll see what each one of them does. There are only three things that you will worry with on, on this grinder while you're grinding bandsaw blades, and that is the shape of the grind rock, which is very simple to shape. It's not a hard thing to do at all. The depth that you grind in and where you locate it on the face of the tooth versus the back of the tooth by the feed finger. And those are the only three things that you worry with <clears throat> as far as adjusting. Uh, I like to run this machine while I'm setting so I can set my blades while I run my sharpener and, uh, and I like to have that close by so I can work with my, my, uh, my, my setter and set blades as well as sharpen and I also have my band roller close by where I can do that. So I like to do all three things while I'm doing this one thing but it it's pretty well takes care of itself once you get it going. I'm going to turn it on and let you see again what it does. I'm going to slow it down. You can see exactly how it follows the, uh, the tooth, how it pushes the next tooth. Notice this feed finger is pushing the tooth that goes underneath the grind rock. That's very important. If we push the tooth that goes underneath the grind rock, every tooth will be exactly the same height. What you don't want to do is to push back one tooth away. That would not be correct. You have to push the tooth that goes under the grind rock. Then you have very accurate consistency. Now I'm going to speed it back up. I'm going to actually go to 50%. Some people sharpen there. I think it's just a little on the fast side. If it works, I don't argue with people if they like it. But I like about that speed. That's where I want to see it. Now I'm going to show you just a little turn of the knob and we get a harder grind. If I had a very dull blade, I might grind that hard. I'm going to bring it back up till it's just a light grind. And then I'm going to push it away from the face. See it hit hard on the back? None on the face, but hard on the back. Now I'm going to take it back. We'll hit lightly on the face, lightly on the back. Now I'm going to hit harder on the face, and you'll notice hard on the face, none on the back. That's how that adjustment works. But we're precisely in control of what we do to that tooth, and that's what sharpening is all about, is being in control. I'm going to show you how fast we can change the cam out to a different cam. One bolt here. I can take the head back. I unscrew this counterclockwise and after you run it a while 
you'll use a crescent wrench on that. But then I can pick up another cam. I'm just going to reinstall this cam uh, for this blade. But if I want to change two spacing from a, a one inch to a seven eighths, then it'd be just that simple. Spin it back on just snug. Put my feed finger back up. And I'll just snug this up. I, won't, I don't want it super tight, but just snug. Thread my adjusting bolt back down in the hole. I'll lift up right here, give it one rotation, let it go, turn on my rock, and I'm back. I may do a fine adjustment here. And I'm back sharpening again. So it's very quick to change the cams out. One other thing I'm going to show you is how the door opens, and this is what we would do to change the blade out. We have a slot here that's just a half turn that lets that key fall out. Our blade can come out, and we can put another blade on, bring it back up here, push in on the blade, and uh, click. Give a little tension to the spring. I just want enough tension that the blade don't move in the clamp. I'll let it give one rotation on the, on the cam, turn it on, and we're back grinding. One other important thing that you can't see from the position of the camera, we have these arms. You can see the arms. There's one out the back, one out each side and they are adjustable so we can get the height of the blade. The important thing to me is that this blade goes around in a level manner. I don't want this blade rocking up and down like this as we sharpen it. That won't give you accurate cuts. So I want to have a blade that is steady down doing what it's supposed to do. Now I want to show you something. If you can see right here, you'll see this gap in the blade right there. There's about a quarter inch gap. That blade's not setting in right. And what I'm going to do is just lift this head up just a little bit for one rotation of the cam. And uh, if you can see it, you're going to see it push this blade right back down. Matter of fact, I'm just going to take that out of the way so I don't block the view. You'll watch this blade seat itself right back down and the cam is what does that. <coughs> Went right back down and it's steady in place. And, and that's important because this machine will keep that blade down against these rollers for accuracy of grind, accuracy of the face grind and the top grind at all times. And there you have it, a heavy duty grinder that will do everything you need to do with the narrow curve or the thin curve band industry, whether it be a sawmill, whether it be resaws, this machine will do what you need it to do.